In this tutorial, I'll show you how to modify the table of contents that you installed in a navigable PDF using tools within Adobe Acrobat. Now, to be clear, this is not as efficient as initially creating the table of contents in Microsoft Word. And so you may decide that if you have extensive changes to make to a PDF file, it would be worth just recompiling the PDF file with a new Word generated skeleton file, including a table of contents. But let's just say we want to add one section heading to this document. So I'm looking at the table of contents right here. I'm going to come over to the edit PDF button, click that, and it's going to make these into text boxes that I could modify. In this case, let's say I want to add a new section four, which essentially will connect to another page in my document. Well, I need to move this conclusion box down and I can click that and I'll drag it straight down. Adobe will give me some guides here to show me, roughly speaking, where I should drag it. There it is. It's already warning me that it has a association. That link needs to be adjusted so that it points in the right place. And in fact, maybe I'll do that right now. I'm going to come up to links. I'm going to click that. Add edit web or document link. In this case, we're looking at document links. And you can see this is the box that connects to the conclusion page. And since the conclusion text in the table of contents has been displaced, these don't line up. So I'm going to hover over this box, click it and drag it down so that it once again encapsulates the conclusion text. All right, so that link has been restored. That'll go where it's supposed to if somebody clicks the word conclusion in the table of contents. But of course, I have to add the section four link and text. So I'm gonna start by adding the text. I'm gonna come up here and click add text. And I'll place my cursor here and type section four. And then I'll click outside the box. It's not precisely lined up. So I'm going to go up here and click edit. So that way I get my cursor back that I can click and I can drag this and try to line it up as best I can so that it looks like the original that was created in Microsoft Word. That's not too bad. Then I'm going to come back to link and I'm going to say add, edit, web or document link. And this, of course, has to point to, this link I'm creating is going to point to where in the document I want this section four link to go off the table of contents. And I'm gonna click and drag out that box. And then Adobe automatically, when I release the mouse button, it brings up this dialog or this pop-up in which it says, okay, where do you want this link to go? And some other things too. Invisible rectangle, yes, I wanna leave that so that it matches the other ones. Go to a page view. That's what I want. Okay, next, I'll click next. And then it says, well, go to the page that you want this to go to before clicking this set link button. And I can navigate just by scrolling. I can use the scroll bar here. I can even use the bookmarks or the page thumbnails to go to the correct page. And, and I'll just pick one arbitrarily here. Let's pick the last slide in this slide deck set. I'll close that sidebar and then I click set link. Now that I've done that, that's where the section four heading in the table of contents will go. Then I'll click close and let's take it for a test drive. So I want to click section four and it goes to the correct page or in this case, a slide as part of this PDF document. So this will get me what I want in adding a section heading to my table of contents. If I had previously added documents or pages or files to this PDF, I could then rearrange this table of contents using a variation on the tools and methods I just showed you. But as you will see, if I'm gonna make extensive changes to this PDF, 
it's going to quickly make this a complicated process. And it, it really raises the question, if you're going to make extensive changes, whether it wouldn't be better to just start over and create a new PDF, compile the files or parts into it that you have together with anything else you want to add, and then build a new table of contents in a, a Word skeleton file as we demonstrate in our other tutorials. That's your choice.